Our presentation is on the mid-range theory of chronic sorrow by Mary Kay Chambers, Sarah Chapman, Dustin Strickland, and Jill Vadreen. I'm Jill Vadreen, and I will begin with a theorist background. Georgine G. Eats was born in New Bern, North Carolina in 1945. She graduated from Watts Hospital School in Nursing in Durham, North Carolina with her diploma in nursing in 1966. In 1977, she graduated from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University with her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. In 1980, she received her Master's of Science in Nursing at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. In 1988, she received her Doctor of Education from North Carolina State University. Eek's issues of interest involve death, dying, grief, and loss, which stem from her personal experiences involving a car accident that left her with life-threatening injuries. This traumatic experience led her to realize that healthcare professionals have a poor understanding of grief reactions and mortality. With this knowledge, Eeks directed her research toward the investigation of death anxiety and grief resolution among long-term care nurses. Eeks applied her research by creating a community service that provided a twice-monthly support group for individuals diagnosed with cancer and their families. This support group allowed Eeks to have a greater understanding about the nature of ongoing sorrow. Mary L. Burke was born in Sandusky, Ohio in 1941. She received her Diploma of Nursing in 1962 from Good Samaritan Hospital School of Nursing in Cincinnati. During the same year, she received a postgraduate certification from Children's Medical Center in District of Columbia. Burke then worked for several years as a pediatric nurse before graduating from Rhode Island College, Providence with her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. In 1982, Burks earned her Master's of Science in Nursing from Boston University. During this time, she was awarded a Certificate in Parent-Child Nursing and Interdisciplinary Training in Developmental Disabilities from the Child Development Center of Rhode Island Hospital and a section on Reproductive and Developmental Medicine, Brown University in Providence. In 1989, she received her Doctorate of Nursing in the Family Studies Cognate from Boston University. Burke became interested in chronic sorrow during her master's degree program while working in a clinical practicum at the Child Development Center of Rhode Island. She wrote her master's thesis, The Concerns of Mothers of Preschool Children with Myelomeningocele, which identified the chronic sorrow of parents and children with spina bifida. Burke then developed the Burke Chronic Sorrow Questionnaire for her doctoral dissertation. Margaret A. Hainsworth was born in Brockville, Ontario, Canada in 1931. She attended George Peabody College for Teachers in Nashville, Tennessee, and received a diploma in public health nursing in 1959. In 1973, she received her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing at Sal Regina College, Newport, Rhode Island. In 1974, she earned her Master's degree in Psychiatric and Mental Health Nursing from Boston College. In 1986, she received her doctoral degree in Education Administration from the University of Connecticut. She was board certified as a clinical specialist in psychiatric and mental health nursing in 1988. Hainsworth became interested in the issue of chronic sorrow during her practice as a facilitator for a support group for women with multiple sclerosis. During this practice, she wrote her dissertation work, an ethnographic study of women with multiple sclerosis using a symbolic interaction approach. Hainsworth became one of the four co-founders of the NCRCS and continued her studies on chronic sorrow. Middle range theories contain a number, a limited number of variables and are limited in scope as well, according to Walker and Vaughn. Walker and Vaughn also state that middle range theories must be testable while remaining general. The theory of chronic sorrow focuses on minimal but prominent issues, including the ongoing suffering related to a loss and the progressive grief that follows. It also emphasizes that these reactions are exacerbated by trigger events and dealt with by particular management methods such as coping strategies and medical interventions. The theory of chronic sorrow applies these variables to people across the lifespan, which classifies it as a middle range theory. Practice and experience and theoretical sources. In the summer of 1989, Eats, Burke, and Hainsworth, along with Lindgren, developed the Nursing Consor Consortium for Research on Chronic Sorrow which is the NCRCS, which developed to further investigate and develop chronic sorrow. The NCRCS expanded from Burke's thesis work, an ethnographic study of women with multiple sclerosis uses, using a symbolic interaction approach. 
This work was developed from the observation of mothers with children with spina bifida. The theory of chronic sorrow was based on two main sources, including the original work of chronic sorrow by Olshansky in 1962 and the model of stress and adaptation by Lazarus and Volkman in 1984. Eats, Burke, and Hainsworth used Olshansky's original idea of chronic sorrow, which was defined as a broad, simple description of psychological reaction to a tragic situation. Olshansky developed this definition while observing the recurrent sadness experienced by parents of mentally retarded children. Eats, Burke, and Hainsworth expanded the idea of chronic sorrow by incorporating the response to grief as displayed in Lazarus and Fultman's model of stress and adaptation. This work examined a variety of management methods used to overcome grief, such as internal mechanisms including action-oriented cognitive reappraisal and interpersonal behaviors. The NCRCS developed their theory of chronic sorrow from the empirical evidence of various chronic life situations. Some of these issues included individuals with cancer, infertility, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, spouse caregivers of persons with chronic mental illness, and parent caregivers of adult children with chronic, chronic mental illness. This empirical evidence led Eats, Burke, and Hainsworth to define chronic sorrow as periodic recurrence of permanent pervasive sadness or other grief-related feelings associated with ongoing disparity resulting from a loss experience. Primary Sources Eats, Burke, and Hainsworth described their theory of chronic sorrow in multiple works. The work that most fully describes this concept is the Middle Range Theory of Chronic Sorrow, found in the Journal of Nursing Scholarship in 1998. This work provides the purpose, framework, scope, and sources of their theory. This work presents the idea that chronic sorrow occurs throughout the lifespan in people who encounter a significant loss. This work also portrays that nurses should view chronic sorrow as a normal response to a significant loss. In this work, the theorists emphasize that healthcare providers should provide various means of comfort and enhance coping strategies of their patients who are experiencing chronic sorrow. Mary Kay Chambers will now present the basic considerations of theory. My name is Mary Catherine Chambers and I'll be discussing the basic considerations of theory and the summary and interrelationship of basic concepts to the goal of nursing. Conceptualization of the nursing meta paradigm. In relation to the client or person, the theory of chronic sorrow asserts that an individual holds an idealistic impression of health and life in general. They take their life experiences and compare, compare them with their idealized perception and with the perceived situations surrounding them. The theory maintains that each individual's experience with loss is unique, but sharing general, predictable characteristics of the loss experience. In relation to the environment, each birth and health Burke and Hainsworth hold that an individual's interactions manifest in a social context. This social context is composed of family, social, work, and healthcare environments. Individuals act in response to their personal assessments and relative to social norms. In relation to health, this theory contends that there is normalcy to an individual's functional capacity. One's overall health is contingent upon the ability to adapt to issues and disparity related to loss. Disparity exists when one's current individual reality differs from the idealized relationship and the actual relationship. Normal responses to losses in life are dependent on an individual's effective coping skills. In relation to nursing, nurses may diagnose and implement interventions for chronic sorrow. Nurses anticipate the needs of those at risk and function to provide an empathetic presence. Interventions characteristic of an empathetic presence include active listening, offering support and reassurance, and recognizing and focusing on the feelings while acknowledging the individual and his or her family members. The role of the nurse includes that of teacher expert, compassionate caregiver, and empathetic presence. Major central concepts and definitions. Chronic sorrow is defined as the ongoing disparity resulting from a loss characterized by pervasiveness and permanence, according to Schreier and Droz. Features of chronic sorrow include pervasive, pervasiveness and permanence that is progressive in nature. Chronic sorrow is experienced by those who have experienced a disruption of an anticipated life course. Loss. A significant loss must occur prior to the onset of chronic sorrow. 
Loss is defined as a disparity between the idealized perception of the life experience created by an individual and the situation that actually exists. Loss is unique to an individual, secondary to his or her idealized life perception. An example of loss is a parent's perception of a perfect child and one who has a developmental disability, such as cerebral palsy. Trigger events. Trigger events are closely related to disparity and are defined as situations or circumstances that highlight the negative disparity of the individual loss. Triggers are identified situations that cause an individual to experience again the initial feelings of grief. Triggers highlight an individual's ideal life perception with that which actually exists. Common triggers include dates, such as birthdays and anniversaries, and events such as sporting events, proms, graduations, and weddings. Management methods. Management methods are means employed by individuals to cope with chronic sorrow. Internal methods are coping strategies used by the individual experiencing chronic sorrow and include cognitive, interpersonal, and emotional actions. External methods are interventions provided by professionals and include the empathetic presence, teacher expert, and competent professional roles. Ineffective management results from coping strategies that increase an individual's discomfort and distress and intensify feelings of chronic sorrow. Effective management results from coping strategies that promote an individual's comfort and lessen feelings of chronic sorrow. Theoretical assertions and propositions. There are several theoretical assertions described by Eakes, Burke, and Hainsworth. An individual experiencing a single or ongoing loss senses a disparity between ideal perceptions and reality, which leads to feelings of pervasive sadness and grief. Chronic sorrow is cyclical in nature and is related to an ongoing disparity caused by an individual loss. Anticipated, predictable, internal and external triggers intensify feelings of grief. Individuals have both innate and learned coping strategies that may or may not be effective in chronic sorrow experience. The interventions of healthcare professionals may or may not be effective in helping the individual to regain a normal equilibrium when experiencing chronic sorrow. Summary of the interrelationship of basic concepts to the goals of nursing. The theory of chronic sorrow is a middle range theory that provides a frame of reference for understanding an individual's reaction to loss. This theory asserts that chronic sorrow is a normal human response to an ongoing disparity created by a loss. The response occurs across the affected individual's lifespan. Feelings of pervasive sadness are cyclic in nature and characterized by permanence and are potentially progressive in nature. Eeks, Burt, and Hainsworth have proposed a theory which enables nurses to better understand human responses to chronic illness, unexpected accidents resulting in permanent life changes, or a permanent loss. Nurses are able to anticipate typical triggers for recurrence of feelings of grief and provide the interventions through active listening and provision of an empathetic presence. Management methods may be internal or external and can prove effective or ineffective. The major roles of the nurse are that of empathetic listener, teacher expert, and caring and competent caregiver. This theory can be used as a framework by all health all healthcare professionals who are working with those experiencing a loss to assist the individual in understanding this normal human response and anticipating and managing periods of sadness and grief. Next, Dustin Strickland will discuss the logical form and implications and information for advanced nursing practice. My name is Dustin Strickland and I will now discuss the concepts, the schematic, and their relationships. The following schematic portrays the concept of chronic sorrow, which is progressive and cyclic in nature reoccurring throughout the lifetime of the person that's affected. Heaps, Burke, and Hainsworth utilize this framework to assist that with identifying individuals suffering with chronic sorrow. This framework portrays two antecedents in chronic sorrow. The first antecedent occurs at the onset of the living loss, such as when the diagnosis of an illness is made. During this time, the parent experiences sadness from the loss of their original expectations of his or her children. The second antecedent occurs from the unresolved disparity resulting from the loss which initiates a gap between reality and fantasy. 
The unresolved disparity results in chronic sorrow, which is usually permanent, recurring, and often progressive. When an individual is suffering from chronic sorrow, he or she may utilize either internal, external, or combination of both types of coping skills. Internal coping skills are personal and include methods such as social interactions, internal <clears throat> but positive thinking, self-awareness, acceptance, and distractive techniques. External coping skills involve interactions with medical professionals, such as counseling, pharmacological interventions, pastoral care, and referral sources. It is the nurse's responsibility to assess these coping mechanisms and enhance them when possible. The above framework addresses triggers which are primary events or situations that precipitated the re-experience of initial grief. The nurse must recognize that chronic sorrow can be triggered by the events closely related to the initial event, such as hospitalizations, new diagnosis, milestones, and developmental transitions. Patient education is considered an external coping mechanism and is crucial when assessing individuals with identification of personal triggers. If a trigger event occurs, the individual possesses ineffective coping mechanisms to handle the event. The individual who experiences discomfort and recurring sorrow, <clears throat> it is the nurse's goal to identify triggers and strengthen coping mechanisms in order to increase comfort and prevent progressive sorrow. In the middle range, logical form, the middle range theory of chronic sorrow was founded on qualitative studies in which 196 interviews were conducted. They were based on empirical evidence <clears throat> gathered the middle range theory of chronic sorrow was developed. The evidence portrayed shared causes of regrief and illustrated inner coping mechanisms as well as the role of the nurse in external management of chronic sorrow. One flaw with the form of the theory could be that not all individuals experiencing a continued loss or grief will exhibit the same signs and symptoms of chronic sorrow as defined by the theory. Some individuals not experiencing chronic sorrow could be based on differences in personalities or the possibility that they receive different forms of treatment and interventions to help cope at the time when the loss occurred. Relationships to nursing and nursing education and the advance of nursing practice. The middle range theory of chronic sorrow offers direction to the nurses treating individuals experience, experiencing the signs and symptoms that depict chronic sorrow. Chronic sorrow became acknowledged as a nursing diagnosis by NANDA in 1998. The accepted acceptance of chronic sorrow as a nursing diagnosis provided and illustrated characteristics of the diagnosis, interventions, treatment, and established patient outcomes. Using this middle range theory, nursing educators have been able to emphasize the importance of clinical decision making and care for planning for individuals' experience of sorrow. Nurse educators have also placed importance on reevaluation of the care plan to ensure that interventions and outcomes are adequate. This theory provides continuing education courses that will be beneficial to the advanced practice nurse working with families and caregivers of chronically ill patients. Implications and information for advanced practice nurses. This middle range theory will provide a useful knowledge to the advanced practice nurse by enabling him or her to identify and adequately recognize individuals who may be experiencing chronic sorrow. Using helpful tools such as the BERT NCRCS Chronic Sorrow Questionnaire, the advanced practice nurse could further refine what struggles the individual is experiencing, as well as any coping mechanisms actively used by the individual. The advanced practice nurse will also be knowledgeable of various interventions that may be useful with treatment. An essential role with the reevaluation of the interventions and outcomes to ensure patients achieve positive outcomes and adequate care. Now Sarah Chapman will discuss the case study and the summer. My name is Sarah Chapman and I'll be presenting the case study. Mrs. Jackson is a 48-year-old mother to a 22-year-old son named Logan. 
Mrs. Jackson resides in Monroe, Louisiana with her husband, while Logan is at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge, finishing his senior year. He is a senior starter for the football team and has high hopes for a possible draft into the NFL. Mrs. Jackson enjoys watching her son do what he loves most every Saturday that she can. She never misses Saturday football in Death Valley in the fall. In May, Mrs. Jackson is seen by the family nurse practitioner at the physician's office. Mrs. Jackson states that she finally decided to seek treatment for her insomnia. When questioned about possible causes of stressors, Mrs. Jackson opens up about life-changing events. She states that her son was involved in a high-speed car accident one Saturday night in late November following an LSU victory on the football field. Mrs. Jackson states that her son barely survived the accident that left him paralyzed from the neck down. He required a tracheotomy and now has a hospital bed set up in his old room at his parents' home in Monroe. Mrs. Jackson states that she has become his primary caregiver, turning her son every two hours to prevent bed sores. She also provides tracheotomy care at least twice daily to prevent infections and to clear his airway. Mrs. Jackson quit her job right after the accident in order to care for her son, while her husband had to take a job away from home in order to make more money to provide for the family. She states her trouble sleeping has been going on for the last two to three months, but has worsened in the last few weeks. The nurse practitioner decides that Mrs. Jackson could be suffering from chronic sorrow. The practitioner evaluates Mrs. Jackson using the Burks NCRCS Chronic Sorrow Questionnaire, the caregiver version. During the evaluation, Mrs. Jackson admits to feeling upset and angry at times, watching her son, who used to be so full of life, lie on a hospital bed. She knows he will never fulfill his dream of playing in the NFL or have a family of his own one day providing her with the grandchildren that she had always dreamed of. Mrs. Jackson states that her son was scheduled to graduate college this month and that now she knows she will never again see him walk across the stage and accept a diploma. Mrs. Jackson admits to becoming reclusive since her son's accident and states she rarely speaks to friends anymore. She states that her son's health is her primary concern, however, she admits to feelings of grief and despair when envisioning the life he should be living. She also hates that her husband works away from home now, leaving her solely responsible for the household and living. When asked about any coping mechanisms to deal with this loss, Mrs. Jackson states that she tried talking to her preacher right after the accident, but has since stopped going to church. She also spoke with a few very close friends after the accident, but again states that those friendships have been terminated since. Mr. Jackson states that she does not feel, I mean, that she does feel better speaking to a professional now about the feelings that she kept inside for so long. The nurse practitioner carefully addresses the responses to Mr. Jackson's questionnaire. The practitioner encourages Mr. Jackson to schedule regular weekly meetings with a professional counselor who can help her better cope with emotions and stress. Mr. Jackson is also encouraged to reestablish the important friendships that she had in her life prior to Logan's accident. The practitioner further suggests that Mrs. Jackson attend a group meeting for mothers with disabled children that are held at the local hospital community room on Sundays. The meetings can provide a sense of comfort to Mrs. Jackson in knowing that she isn't the only mother to experience this hardship. Mrs. Jackson states that she does think meeting other parents and just talking to someone who has undergone a similar situation will lift her spirits. In summary, the middle range theory of chronic sorrow may be applied to individuals who have experienced a significant loss at some point. This theory asserts that each individual experiences loss uniquely. However, in most cases, there are common characteristics of grief and sorrow. In each situation, trigger events such as birthdays or anniversaries may increase intensity of grief. Effective management of coping patterns is essential in providing positive outcomes for these individuals. Application of this theory by the registered nurse, nurse educator, and advanced practice nurse will aid in providing effective care, treatment options, and positive outcomes for patients experiencing chronic sorrow.